Hi guys, so I'm back making some simple rooms for some Dungeons and Dragons one shots and campaigns. And something one of you guys asked for some time was an armory, so that's exactly what I'm doing here. As usual, starting off with the base, um, good old MDF sheets. I've gone out and bought loads of these now, uh, just because I want to make loads of these kind of uh, little rooms. And yeah, starting with that, and then using these uh, the foam bricks. Uh, this is my now preferred and go-to sort of method for making sort of stonework. Um, just because there's a lot more irregularity doing sort of single bricks. Um, I find it a lot easier, and I also enjoy the putting together. Uh, pretty simple, obviously a bit of uh, Gorilla Glue there on the base, just because that doesn't melt the um, this foam stuff. And then just, yeah, laying them in. And the great thing is these are all sort of different kind of like heights um, and angles. So they really do look like sort of cobblestones that have been there quite some time. Um, just because obviously some have sunken a little bit and yeah, definitely irregular, which is uh, pretty awesome. And then it's the same procedure for the wall, but this time I've got three different sized bricks. I've got the larger square, small little square, and then a rectangular one. And yeah, again, it just makes it very um, irregular doing this sort of, uh, this sort of pattern. Uh, well, because there is no pattern. So literally I'm just picking up a brick and then just placing it beside another brick. So the thing I like about this as well is all the walls are going to look different. Um, as there is no pattern, there's no sort of, yeah, it's just a case of higgledy-piggledy, pick them up, stick them there, and yeah, job done. So yeah, love how these sort of bricks turn out. So with the floor though, there's quite a few uh, larger gaps, because obviously some of these squares aren't quite, uh, well, quite square. Um, and before I have sort of just left it. And whilst it doesn't look too bad, sometimes it does look like the gap's a bit too sort of deep. So this time I thought I'd fill it in, or fill some of the bits in anyway, uh, with some good old grout. Um, obviously it still makes the tiles look nice and irregular and uneven, um, but doesn't make the gap in between look too big. Uh, I did leave some of the gaps big though, just so it looked like some of them had really sort of sunk into the ground. Uh, but most of them I went over and just sort of filled in. And yeah, really pleased with how, uh, how that sort of looked. Obviously gave them a bit more of a tidy up. But um, yeah, it's all good, and then ready to, to prime. So I'm using the Army Painter Primer, just because obviously you can use it on the foam and it won't dissolve it like some uh, some sprays will. And then yeah, going over, just doing the good old sort of, well, it's kind of a dry brush, but it's a bit of a, a wetter dry brush as you can see. And yeah, just going over lightly, just so it catches all the raised areas of the brickwork, uh, but leaves all the nooks and crannies nice and dark. Who are, ah, madam. Um, so yeah, doing that all over, and then I actually did actually do it with a, a different sort of colour. So there's two sort of shades here, um, just to sort of uneven the uh, the look of the the stones, make some of them look a bit lighter and a bit darker. And yeah, it's all good. And then ready to sort of do a bit of um, a bit of a wash on. So this is a wash that I've made up, purely just black ink and water, sprayed it over, and then just let it sink in. Um, and it just gives it a really nice sort of weathered look, which uh, which comes out really well. And because of the doors, I like to paint them with the uh, the Army Painter Speed paints. Um, but obviously they go best on a lighter colour, which is why I'm obviously just painting the door white first. Um, just so obviously the, uh, the speed paint can be seen nicely over it. So I'm using the hardened leather, just because obviously this is make it look like a nice or sort of dark uh, looking door. Um, I think I went over this actually with two coats, just because I like the fact that these, um, these doors that I 3D print really are very wooden-y would look in. Um, so yeah, so doing the two coats really made that sort of come through rather nicely. And yeah, there we go. That's the uh, the basic sort of shape of the uh, the room all done. Uh, really pleased with how that looks. And then it's on to 3D printing lots of weapons. So I've got my usual place, Thingiverse, just because they obviously nice and free this place. I will leave a link in the description to this, but basically I just typed in medieval weapons um, and then these turned up. Which is pretty cool because obviously loads of weapons and the little stands to uh, to sort of put them on. So yeah, using my AnyCubic Photon M3, uh, just in case of plonking them all in there. As you can see, you can get loads on one plate. Stick them on a little USB, pop it in the side, push a couple of buttons, and away it goes. So I think it only took about an hour and a half because it wasn't too high um, in height. But I actually printed out two lots um, just because obviously more weapons the better. And as you can see, because I put them quite close to each other, they've actually sort of come out in large groups, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. That's going to make it easier for me to actually paint them. Um, because I'm going to sort of batch paint them as they are, rather than sort of taking them all off, because they are quite small and fiddly. Um, so I start off by just painting the whole lot in um, a silver, 
which made that say nice and quick, nice and easy, because there are so many, um, I did think this was going to take a long time to do. Uh, but in actual fact, it didn't take that long at all. Plus, uh, you only actually get to see one side of the weapon, because obviously I glue it down to things, uh, which is why I'm only painting one side of the weapons. Um, so obviously that does sort of save at least half the time uh, by only doing one side. Uh, and batch painting them like this, again, made it so much quicker and easier, which was pretty cool. So it's a simple paint job, so pretty much just a silver and then a brown, and then going over with a good old brown wash. Um, and yeah, really pleased with how they looked. I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my patrons um, and the sponsors that help uh, me sort of keep producing videos each week, um, as it really does mean so much to me to be able to buy all the bits and pieces that I need. So thanks a lot guys, that's much appreciated. So yeah, back to this, obviously, yeah, good old uh, sort of well, brown wash in this case, over everything, just to make it all look weathered. And yeah, again, let it dry and pleased with the result. And then it was just a case of getting everything off the supports. Because these were quite fiddly, because obviously they are sort of small little bits. Um, it was easier for me just to get me scalpel and use that to sort of like slice off the backs. Um, I had to be careful, I think I did actually break one of the other uh, weapons, well, the handle off it. Um, just because these are obviously pretty small and quite fiddly little pieces. Uh, but it wasn't too bad in the end. So yeah, so the, um, the supports or stands for all the weapons, um, again, batch sort of paint all them, got them all together, sprayed them with a white, and then good old speed paint going over the top. This was actually a darker speed paint I used here, um, and well, surprisingly it's called dark wood, because obviously that's exactly what it is. And then once that was all done, I've then gone over with kind of like um, a yellowish colour, um, and this definitely was dry brush, and there wasn't much on my brush at all just to go over and obviously catch all the edges, just to lighten them and make them all look a little bit more sort of worn and weathered. Um, yeah, again, nice little simple paint job, uh, but effective, I think. So some of them, the, uh, the stands or supports are left single, so they can be glued against the wall. And then the other ones, I sort of obviously glued two together so they can sort of stand up in the, uh, the center. So everything around the outer edge I'm gluing, but I'm leaving some of the um, the stands sort of movable, um, just because obviously I'm not too sure where I might need them in any sort of say the D&D &D campaigns or one shots that I'll be using these sort of rooms for. So yes, yeah, so again, a lot of the weapons I was gluing around the the outer edge, um, just because I didn't want them to move. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with the amount of different sort of styles and types of weapons that were there, um, and obviously some shields on the wall. Um, yeah, really pleased. And say so these are obviously the single ones that are obviously movable. Um, I had considered gluing them down, uh, but then I thought that's silly because obviously I don't know how I want to use these rooms um, in the sort of one shots. And obviously a good old big fat guard. Uh, I think this dude has probably modelled on me. Time to roll those glamour shots. And there we go, one quick and simple armoury room to use in my D&D campaign or one-shots. Okay guys, that's it. Um, let me know what you want me to make next, as in regards to the rooms and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you're new, hit subscribe, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, take care guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.